It's Monday. Someone wanted to know what was in the mason jar. This is raw cream, straight from the cow's udders. It's my favorite thing in coffee. It's like bootleg black market. Don't tell anyone about it. The FDA. We can update. First of all, do you notice anything different about me? What? I washed my face. Oh. We had Passover Friday night. Oh yeah, that was cool. Yeah. I won't say any names, but a few people got a little tipsy. Oh man, there was more. So you're supposed to drink four glasses of wine. Tradition says. I follow tradition. tradition. <laughs> I think that was the most I ever drank. Yeah. Well, it was actually six glasses when I was all said and done. Yeah. Saturday night, we grilled out at a park with some friends. The big thing that we accomplished yesterday was I finished building a carpet ball table for the kids. Oh yeah, that was cool. And this is something the kids have been asking for for a long time. For those who don't know what carpet ball is, the best way I could describe it is it's a mix between bowling and pool. And the kids are all out there now. It's 9, 21 a.m. and they're all out there right now playing their little hearts out. No, it's right. my turn. I thought that was really cool that Ben did that. I told him this will be one of those childhood memories that will stick with him. <laughs> I didn't even know what carpet ball was, but we go to a camp in the summer and they have it. So our kids loved it and played on it all the time. It costs about $150 in materials to build. It's better than like playing video games, you know, in that it's outside, it's interactive, kids can play with other games, it's easy for new people to join. It's a really cool game. It's, the it's also cool that kids, basically kids five and up, and then adults can all play it. The rules are, it's really simple, so all you have to do is you set up your balls any way you want, and then um, the last person standing wins but if it's a tie if like you lose you get one more shot but if it's a tie then you put one ball up and then if it's a tie again then you put another and then you keep on putting it if it's a tie i'll uh, post the link to the instructions that i used down below in the youtube description so you know how i built it i i modified it but These are our matching <laughs> running jerseys. Um, ladies small. I think that's yours, maybe your stuff. Some technical difficulties here. <laughs> <laughs> that's backwards. No. Yes, it is. That is really long. I'm playing racquetball today even though my arm has been killing me so I just got this new band. I haven't been talking about it on the vlog because I feel like talking about my body falling apart just sounds like whining to me even though it actually does feel like my body's falling apart right now. I can't run. I think it's finally time to get summer stuff out. It's been in the 70s and 80s this whole week. I'm making my dresses out and I can wear them every day. <laughs> I gotta find your clothes and all this mess. It's Monday. Eden's working on dinner tonight. What are you making, Eden? Parmesan garlic crusted chicken. Ooh, your specialty. Looks good.
this is like explicit content, so if you have kids, you don't feel comfortable with them. I think porn is a really important topic discussion. I hear two main positions on porn. One is like, go for it, it's fine, it's natural. And the other is the more conservative religious side, which is like, it's wrong, you should feel like crap, and case closed. This article offers kind of a third angle that I think is really valuable. It's a great article. The reason I quit watching porn is to have more sex, says this one guy. Quitting porn is one of the most sex positive things people can do. I just want to enjoy sex again and feel the desire for another person. So what these guys are kind of saying is there's this whole generation of guys that are experiencing, they can't get aroused uh, physically or emotionally because they're so used to computer intimacy, if we can even call it that, that they don't know how to uh, engage in, in intimate behavior, have sex with real women. This quote says, the internet is like a 24 hour all you can eat buffet restaurant that serves every type of sex snack. When I first discovered porn, especially online, well, it was very similar to going to a buffet, just kind of like I said, I was like, this is great. It's everything that I want all the time with no limits. And I've come to believe that in relationships and in life, limits are actually good things. So I actually appreciate the fact that now I have a wife that doesn't want to have sex every time I do. Uh, that's what makes it like not masturbation, is it involves me having to get to know and serve and love another person. So it's actually the inaccessibility of it that at its core makes it great. This quote says, because porn videos are limitless, free and fast, Users can click to a whole new scene or genre as soon as their arousal ebbs and thereby condition their arousal patterns to ongoing, ever-changing novelty. This has been so dangerous to me personally. I mean, this is not a theoretical thing, but I've noticed that my ability to connect with Cammy, there's times when we've had sex and because we've both experienced sexual trauma in our past, her much more than me, there's times we're having sex and she will start crying you know, because there's this trauma that she's dealing with. And I, because I've been conditioned with porn to like want the next exciting thing, I'm like, why are you crying? I want the next thing quicker and fast, like on demand, because I've come to expect that because that's what the internet affords. So, like, so unnatural, you know, it's like there's no person, real person allowed that we can have these interactions with. It's only because of the technology. There's this line that says, internet porn, junk food, and drugs can be fun and pleasurable temporarily. However, they also have the potential to desensitize you to normal and natural things and ultimately rob you of the one thing you thought they would give you, the ability to experience pleasure. So keep in mind, this is not written by religious folks. Uh, this is like comparing porn to junk food, which we're against junk food, we're against drugs. And internet porn, it says, has the same net effect as those things, is it robs you the ability to truly experience long-lasting pleasure. And this is where I feel like the religious side has really lost, lost it for me, is they're not acknowledging how enjoyable and fun porn is. At first you have to say, man, that thing, it's really appealing. Just like Cheetos, they're freaking good. You know, let's just say that. Let's not ignore that fact. But we also have to ask this question, how long is it good for? Does it make your life better? Does it make your relationships better around you? Does it make you a better person to be around? Does it make help you love others more and serve others? Does it help the way that you see the opposite sex? In my experience, porn ruined all those things for me. Parents, too, are wary of broaching the subject, afraid of what questions might be asked, but curiosity abhors a vacuum. Online porn is becoming de facto sex ed for many young people. When we, uh, one of our daughters was uh, like four or five, and I thought, we're gonna be like way ahead of the game here, and we're gonna talk to um, our kids about sex, because Cammie and I weren't really raised talking about it at a young age at all. 
and one of our daughters said, oh, is that the thing that we do with a neighbor kid? And our heart just sunk. I mean, we couldn't believe, we, were, we had thought we had done this like super early, but it was already too late. What? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yes. We think that even if your kids aren't ready for like the details or whatever you're worried about with them, just introducing the topic for mom and dad is the most important thing you can do. So we want our kids to know sex is the thing that you talk about with mom and dad. And we're more concerned about them getting introduced uh, to sex by someone else than overexposing them to certain information. The information is never the most dangerous thing. It's actually the relationship. And your kids hearing about sex from someone else, I think it violates relationship. The final line that I'm gonna end on is I've wasted years of my life looking for a computer or mobile phone to provide something it is not capable of providing. That pretty much sums it up for me. I've spent a lot of time, like I said, looking at porn. And the conclusion that I've come to, not all the religious reasons I was given were valid, but also, not all the like super liberal, like do whatever you want reasons are valid either. And what I've concluded is when I go to porn, usually I'm looking for something. I'm using it to escape, to not deal with reality, to have fun, but it never fulfills its promises to me. It's never helped me out over the long run or made me a better person. And that's, that's one of those things I really, just need to be reminded of again and again and again. Because especially when I want to look at porn, that's one of the things I need to be thinking about then, not, because I always know it after the fact, but it's actually before the fact that I want to remember that. It's just like, you know, I'm like, oh man, if I could just have some ice cream tonight, my problems will go away. And then what happens? I go get ice cream and then I feel like a pile of sh afterwards. It wasn't worth it. What I'd love to hear is people's response to any of these points in the comment section below. I'll post a link to the article. I am so glad that this topic is coming up in, I'm not gonna call this like intellectual circles, but I'm glad it's being approached in creative ways because I'm kind of bored from reading the same old religious stuff and the same old kind of liberal stuff. But I'm really passionate on this topic because I feel like this has really done a number on me and my marriage and um, I, I hope that this helps some of you guys out there. We're gonna end the vlog now. We thought it was gonna be like really awkward. Hey, I'm trying to record here. My mom's playing the harmonica in the background while I'm trying to talk about porn.